welcome to the Wander Learn podcast. This is Francis Tapon. I'm your host, and I'm here with uh, two cats and a dog. For those who are watching us on video, this is uh, Radar, Hana, and Micron is the cat standing over there. Uh, those of you who are listening will just have to listen to my voice. What I want to talk to you briefly about today is Couchsurfing. Now, Couchsurfing is a website. Uh, go to couchsurfing.com, and it's very popular. And people go there because they think of it as free housing. Well, put yourself in the host's shoes. You invite some stranger into your house, and all of a sudden he just eats all your food, you cook him dinner and all this other stuff, and then he leaves after two, three days. He uses your hot water and, and electricity and, and all this stuff, and at best says thank you, and that's it. It would be kind of a, an experience. If that happens over and over and over again, it's fine for once or twice or whatever. But after a while, you're like, why am I inviting all these strangers in a house for them to just use and abuse me? What, that's what it would feel like for some people. Some people are so generous in their heart. They're happy to just give, 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 give and have people just, you know, accept all their generosity and, and give nothing back. And that's fine. But most human beings love the give and take reciprocity. And that's something that is important to keep the couchsurfing community alive. Giving selflessly sometimes works better with friends that we've known for a long time, but strangers is different. So therefore, if you want to be a good couchsurfing guest, you got to think about ways to give back economically to the host. And it doesn't necessarily, it doesn't ever mean really to give, you know, here's $20, but instead to go off and buy some food at a grocery store, um, go to a farmer's market together with them and, and, and buy food, take them out to dinner, take them out to lunch. Uh, you can do things that are don't cost much money. Uh, in other words, cook for them. Uh, that could actually be free. Let's say some another free activity for you just cost time, which is how about if I go clean up your house, clean your toilet, do the things that nobody likes to do, take out the trash, um, maybe babysit, um, offer them uh, babysitting services. Um, if they have, if you have some sort of expertise, you could help them be a tutor, for example. For example, you know how to speak English and you're sitting there in Saudi Arabia. You could help tutor their child or anybody in the family English. You can, let's say you know a lot about mathematics, to teach them mathematics. So there's so many different ways that you as a guest can actually give back to, the, to your host. And that's something that is common sense, but I have been to about nearly 200 couch surfing hosts about and it's depressing to see how many stories they tell me to hear all these stories about how the guests have come they just are completely inconsiderate um, just very selfish people and they just treat it like a hotel or a hostel and they just come in even at all hours of the night so the couch surfing community will not continue as long if people are abusing the system and abusing the generosity of their hosts so do your best give back generously by default. Think about, here's another way you can think about it. Think, ask yourself, how much would I be spending if I was staying at a hostel, spending my own food, money, and all this other stuff, and having to get pay for internet or whatever? And I have basically a concierge. This person might take you out. They might be a chauffeur. They might drive you around. Add all those costs up, and you might find out that that couch surfer is delivering $50 worth of value to you. Well, then, isn't it nice to maybe spend 15, 20 bucks on them? It's still a win-win. They're not asking, they understand that you're traveling because you are short on cash. You're using couchsurfing not only for the cultural experience, but also because you're short on cash. They understand that. They don't expect much, but a little bit of gratitude, financial gratitude, is all, it's all that's needed. And yes, you'll find the occasional host who will not accept anything from you. Wonderful but at least offer and offer aggressively. In other words, really insist to give back in one way or another. And then that host will be happy to let you stay on longer if you need to stay a few more extra days. That host will be happy to host other couch surfing guests. But if everybody's selfish with them, then it's gonna be game over. So that's my tip for you. This is Francis Tapon encouraging you to wander and learn.